Hi there and welcome to this video about evaluating indices. So first of all we need to understand index notation. Well I'm sure you've come across it before but let's quickly do um, a couple of examples. So if you're asked to write this um, in another way you might write this as 2 times 2 times 2. So um, the power tells you how many times you write the number um, and you might be asked to evaluate it or find the value of and that's when you actually work out the calculation which is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So in this case, it's very similar, 10 times 10 times 10, and if you ask to evaluate it, then that's going to be 1,000. So that's just a quick reminder of those key facts. Um, two things that get asked in different um, parts of the exam occasionally are these two facts here. So anything other than 0 to the power 0 is 1, and anything to the power 1 is just the number itself. So just quickly show you, 5 to the power 0 equals 1. Uh, 1 to 7 to the power of 0 is 1. If I have 5 to the power of 1, that's 5. If I have 127 to the power of 1, that's just 127. So, let's move on to negative powers now. So, I'm actually going to begin by looking at fractions, because I think it helps explain what's going on. Um, you may have seen shortcuts explained to you before, but I'm trying to give you an understanding that will help you answer all of these types of questions. So, if you see the power is negative, that means to change it to a positive power, you need to do the reciprocal. So with a fraction, that means that we flip the fraction upside down. And instead of writing negative 1, because we found the reciprocal, it's now a positive power. So this is now 3 over 2 to the power of 1, which is just 3 over 2. Or you could write 1 half or 1.5. Now, second example, again, we're going to deal with the negative power first. So I'm going to flip the fraction upside down to find the reciprocal and change the power to a positive. All I need to do now is square both the numerator and the denominator. So 3 squared over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4, which you could write that as um, 2 and 1 quarter. So what about when you have just a whole number there? So I'm just going to quickly show you something that you may have seen before. If I have something like this, 5 to the power of negative 2, you may have been told just write that as 1 over 5 to the positive power. Um, so I'm just going to explain where that comes from. So if I change this whole number into, or write it as a fraction, I could write 2 as 2 over 1. Now, we've just seen that if we have a negative power, we flip the fraction upside down and keep the number part without the sign um, the same. So we've changed the negative power to a positive power and 1 over 2 to the power of 1 is just a half. So this one, exactly the same idea. So we're going to write the whole number 2 as a fraction over 1 and then we're going to change the power to a positive power and we need to find the reciprocal so that's 1 over 2 and um, 1 over 2 if I write both as to the power of 2 we get uh, 1 over 1 to the power of 2 over 2 to the power of 2 which is just 1 over 4 and as I say once you get used to these you can quickly start writing things like this. So this would be 1 over 5 to the power of 3. Okay, so that's the uh, negative powers. Now, if you get fractional powers, um, there's a crucial um, starting point, I think, is to consider just powers where the um, fraction is a unit fraction. By that, I mean that the numerator is 1. So if, it, if the numerator is 1, um, and we have a unit fraction we're essentially dealing with um, roots so if it's power if it's 1 over 2 then we're looking at the square root or the second root if it's 1 over 3 we're looking at the cube root 1 over 4 the fourth root and so on so this one simply means the square root of 9 and occasionally we actually write in the um, 2 there as well um, so square root of 9 means what number times by itself is 9 and that's 3 
So this one, 64 to the power of a third, just means the cube root of 64. So what the number times by itself, times by itself again, gives you 64. And you may know that that's 4. And the last one, so this is the fifth root of 32. Now, so again, just to remind us what we're doing. So what we're saying is what number times by itself, times by itself, times by itself, times by itself gives us 32. Now, a little trick here is that the, the examiners aren't going to give you um, huge numbers to deal with. So when you're dealing with fifth roots, six roots and so on, pretty much all the answers are going to be two, three and possibly ten. So just try those possibilities. So if I start by trying two, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen, times two is thirty-two. So actually that first check has worked. If that didn't work, try three to see if it gives you the number. Um, and obviously you may spot if it's 10 or something like that because it's slightly easier to spot. So that's the fifth root of 32. So 32 to the power of a fifth is 2. Right, so here we are then. This is a um, different um, type of question where the numerator isn't 1. So these aren't unit fractions. So before I show you how to do these, just a reminder of a, a simple um, indice rule. If you have something like this, 5 to the power of 2 raised to the power of 3, we could write that as 1 power by just multiplying these two powers together. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you that we could do that with these, or make use of that with these. So what I'm going to do is write 27 to the power of 1 third and raise all of that to the power of 2. So what I've tried to do there is... I've tried to write a combination that gives me two thirds, but I know how to find 27 to the power of a third, and I know how to square, whereas I didn't really know how to do something with this two thirds. So, 27 to the power of a third means the cube root of 27, and then the answer to that we square. So, cube root of 27 is 3, and if we square that, we get 9. So, let's look at the next one. So, we've got... Um, 81 and I'm going to try and find a unit fraction that we could use so one quarter essentially you're looking at what the denominator of each of these fractions is and then think right what do I need to times one quarter by to get three quarters well clearly three so I've now written that in a um, in a way that we can start to proceed and answer so we're doing 81 four root of 81 and then we're going to cube that answer so again, try that technique that I just showed you. So we're looking for a number, times by a number, times by a number, times by a number, that gives us 81. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 isn't going to give me 81. So let's try 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. We've got to cube that. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Last one then. So 32. We've got to do that to the power of a fifth and raise that whole expression to the power of two. So that would be the same as this. So again, fifth root of 32, well, we've just seen um, in a previous example that uh, the fifth root of 32 is two. We've got to square that to get four. Um, before I just finish, just to quickly say, well, some people have said to me before, well, couldn't I write this, if I just show you this, like, this because that would still be to the power of two thirds and the answer of course is yes but imagine having to square 27 first and then find the cube root of that answer it's a lot more difficult so when you're doing these first when you're doing these write the um, unit fraction as your power inside the bracket and the numerator part of the fraction outside the bracket so uh, you don't end up with difficult numbers to deal with. Anyway, that's it. I hope that's helped.